Badger and the Badger. Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a build for Jin. Now Jin's quite an interesting champion. He's a lot different than most ADCs. Um, we thought we had seen the weirdness of ADCs kind of come when we saw Graze with his reload mechanic, but now it's back again with Jin, and it's even weirder because he can't really do anything to help it out, which is kind of unfortunate. But we're going to talk about him today, how his build works. I really think there's really only about one-ish build you can do. Uh, from there, I don't think it really diversifies too much, to be honest. You can tell me I'm wrong. But realistically, this kind of sets him up for the most success. And, we'll and I'll tell you why it, it, it works that way. So we'll get to that in a minute. First thing we need to do, though, is cover his runes and masteries. I'll pull those up now. Take a look at those. Pause the video if you need to. Get a closer look at some of the things that we're picking up, some strategic things. Um, obviously, we're getting that very specific crit mastery um, because obviously you always will be critting, especially early. You can crit with your four shot. Let's talk about that though. First off, let's go over his abilities, starting off with his passive, which is Whisper. Now, as we know, he has his four shots in his gun and when he needs to reload, it does take him two and a half seconds. Now, if he doesn't attack for 10 seconds, he's gonna automatically reload anyways. But let's talk about that fourth bullet. His final bullet, um, with uh, Dark Magics is guaranteed to critically strike and it will deal um, damage of the target's missing health as bonus physical damage. So it's pretty effective at trading in lane. Also, you get health back from this if you take the correct masteries too. So it's a good way to trade in lane and get some health back. Although you gotta be careful because after you shoot that shot, you effectively are out of ammo and you're asking to get traded back onto. Um, the few times I shoot this Zed in the face, he honestly should have probably jumped at me after that because I don't have a whole heck of a lot to do after that. I have to reload, and I have that reload time. Um, Jin, additionally, is your attack damage is increased um, based on your level and based on your critical chance and based on bonus attack speed. So you also have that built into your passive too. And when you do critically strike, some of you do get um, some enhanced movement speed for two seconds. It's pretty awesome. It's interesting, and it's, in, it's a very helpful thing to have. Let's go over his abilities. So at level one, we put a point into your Q. Um, dancing Grenade, we're going to be maxing this out first as we know um, it'll get more damage as it bounces along. It's a decent wave clear thing, it's not the greatest, it's not the worst, that's just his Q, we're going to max out first. At level 2 we have your Deadly Flourish, which is your W ability. We'll max this out second, typically. Um, we want the shorter cooldown on it, actually it's got a flat cooldown, I lied. Um, we just want more of it, and it does significant damage. It will help you clear in lane two, and it will deal good damage to the enemy. And then, we're gonna actually kill this Zed. He's taking too much poke, and I think he's gonna walk too far forward and take the crit, and then we're just gonna bust out the ultimate and kill him after we bust him with a W. We'll leave one shot and done, yeah. But we're gonna clear the wave with the last of our ult. We don't need to do that, though. Let's get back to our abilities at hand. Um, then we have your E ability, which is your captive audience. Now, passively, you get these Lotus Traps, and they're awesome because when people step on them and stay in them, they do significant damage and they do significantly slow and it does give that mark that can then root people with your W. As we know, if other people hit enemies, you can, you know, W will root them in place um, or snare them, whatever. And what will happen though with your captive audience is it's pretty good for like, not warding, but defensive setup. It can be helpful. Um, you can have two charges and they will stay on the ground for two minutes. They're decent, but honestly, they feel really easy to get out of is the problem. So as much as they're nice when people do stay in them, it's quite easy to escape them. You can pretty much run straight into one and then keep running through it to get out of it. You have enough time to do that. I don't know if they'll be fixing this in the future. It just seems like really easy counterplay. Oh, I stepped on one. Either keep running or immediately back out. You can't, if you do dilly-dally and you go forward back for a split second, yeah, you might get stuck in it, but... Realistically, they're pretty easy to get out of, so not a big fan of those. We max those out last. And then obviously, Curtain Call is your ultimate um, points at 6, 11, and 16. As you know, you set up a new channel for uh, 10 seconds, and you will slow the enemies that you hit with each bullet. The fourth bullet does quite a bit more damage, as we know. It's just like your auto attacks. And if you cancel it early, the cooldown is refunded by 10% for each unused shot. So if you kill somebody with the first shot, like I will here, Boom! I could get 30% reduction back, but I actually am going to use it on the wave because it is there, and now I can get that to crash into the wave or into the tower and, you know, lost golden experience for the enemy team. Um, but yeah, if you're not going to be able to get a big impact with it, you might as well just get like 40 or 30% of it refunded if it's not looking good for you to use it. Don't just burn them off because you're also just standing still the whole time too. So make sure you're using your ultimate in a correct manner. 
But let's talk a little bit about the build and why I think this is pretty much the way to build him. I'm going to get baited into a huge fight there and die. Um, so the reason why I like this build the most when it comes to the Jin builds is because of the order, the sequence, and what it brings to Jin as a player. So one of the first things we have is the Essence Reaver. And Essence Reaver is good on him because... You can, when you're playing him kind of like a caster, when you want to use your W because it's a good amount of range and keeping Jin safe is an, a very important thing. Also, being able to put down more of your E's on the ground, all those little Lowe's flowers are great. You want those all over. And your only real wave clear besides your W and auto attacking is your Q, which can do significant damage to not only the wave, but to the enemies. And it's always smart to try to bounce it off the back three um, minions. And then the, hopefully that that fourth bounce will hit the enemy. It can do a very significant amount of damage. Um, and so it's important to try to do that with that grenade. But more importantly is Essence Reaver is going to have us uh, passively get back mana, you know, when we crit things. Which, as a champion who's going to automatically crit, you're going to automatically be getting your mana back. So casting is important. Also, it does bring us good crit chance at a good price with some cooldown reduction, which is always a good thing. And that 65 attack damage. And that's a good thing. Here is something you want to do with the Jin, though, for sure. I can't get to that fight really fast, but I can impact the fight with my ultimate right away, then come help the team immediately or as fast as possible. Um, so use your ultimate at the start of fight. It's not a terrible thing. It also does significant damage. We're going to throw a flower down. We want to keep them between us and them. Their Malphite will actually get out of it in time, because like I said, it's not very difficult to get out of. W ability to keep him in place. Throw a Q at him. Just auto attack him a little bit more and crit. And he dies. Malphite's quite a good counter, though, because, frankly, he builds a lot of armor, and Jin has a hard time getting through that, but don't worry, we will address that in this build. So Essence Reaver is our first item that we talked about. It'll also get better as it goes on with that unique passive as we get more crit chance. The next item that we finished after it was Boots of Swiftness. Now, as much as Berserkers are a item you could get because you do get that attack speed, granted, he doesn't use that, but it will be converted into attack damage. Um, it's not so important on boots for you because it doesn't matter. So boots of swiftness are in fact better because we get that extra movement speed. And since he isn't very mobile and he wants to stay safe because of his reloads and just the way his kit works, since you're kind of more of like a caster, you kind of need to stay safe. So boots of swiftness are just the best option. The only other one I would maybe, maybe recommend would be Ionian boots for more cooldown reduction. But realistically, I would always buy boots of swiftness. They're always going to be better. So pick those up. That third item, then, is the Infinity Edge. And that's a little bit weird for some... Well, just in compared to a lot of other ADCs, typically they're going to be building attack damage as maybe a third item to start ramping up, or at least picking up a zeal. But obviously, that attack damage doesn't give us any more speed on our attacks. So just the straightforward damage that the Infinity Edge brings Jin is a good thing. So we get more attack damage, we get more crit chance, also awesome. And our crits now deal 250% damage instead of 200%, which is all over even better because like we know we're guaranteed that crit on that fourth shot. So having it deal even more damage is a great thing. And that is why it is our third item. Now, the next thing people will argue is, well, for Jin, you don't need any attack speed items at all. And yes, it doesn't technically give you more attack speed, but yes, we do get the attack damage. It's a, it's a worthwhile trade-off in some cases. But the reason why you really do want one or two attack speed items, or at least you could call them viable, are for the crit chance that they will give you and because of the passives that they have. So for instance, we will be building a rapid fire cannon next. And the reason we want that is, yeah, sure, the 30% attack speed will be changed into attack damage, but we get 30% more crit chance strike. We get 5% movement speed, which is important. We bought Boots of Swiftness. We want movement speed. It's a great thing to have. But we also get the energized moving shot, um, and we get that increased range, which is fantastic on Jin. You want the increased range. It's really, really helpful for getting off um, your shots when you're trying to stay safe. It's also really good, too, when you have your fourth shot up and you're still walking toward them to get in range, and then you get that extra bonus range. You get that easier shot, and then you're even further away from them to get an easier and safer reload. So the rapid fire is my favorite. If you wanted burst, yeah, Static Shiv would do the work. Um, realistically, a Phantom Dancer could work because of what it brings in its passive stats, but I don't like that one as much. So um, rapid fire is my go-to. I like the, the increased range on your shot. Just works so much better on him, and it's the one to get. So that's why we build the Rapid Fire as our fourth item. 
Um, it just works really well. You can't really argue the increased range um, and having that for those awesome crits that you can get on that fourth shot. So make sure you pick that up. Also, make sure you swap out your trinket faster than I do. Although I really like solid wards. They don't die right away if people see them in a bush. So I'm just a fan of that. Um, wow, that last shot. Granted, he had his ult on, but it did four, 1355 damage. Pretty significant. Um, kill a couple people here. Here comes the third shot. And fourth shot on my crit! 754 on Ash. That's pretty good. And we shut her down. Always want to do that. Um, so yes, that you could say is your core four item build. But there is something that needs to be addressed, and I could have done it this game. Instead, I will build the parts of it right now, because I just will. Um, now, a lot of people, when it comes to lifesteal, they like to get pretty much the Bloodthirster. It's kind of most people's go-to. With the introduction of the Duskblade, and with the way this character works in general, staying safe is a very important thing. You are very susceptible to getting dove on. That is a very huge weakness to almost any ADC regardless, but really to, uh, to Jin, it's even a big, bigger one. So I almost think you can't ever really buy Bloodthirster. I don't really see a situation where that is a good item on him. Yeah, it'll give you um, like better healing, and since it has like a good amount of lifesteal actually on it, but it just doesn't make sense. Instead, I think you almost always have to get Mercurial because you really, really need the active of the Quicksilver Sash within it. Against Zed this game, it's very important. Against a Zed with Dusk, um, it's even better because I'm going to be getting that on me. He actually has stopped going for me more often because I'm being very, very careful with my positioning, and he's deciding to go after... Um, Salty, salty, control, salty Kyle on Caitlyn. Um, I'm also trying to stay safe too, because Malphite's always looking for both of us. Here he's going to go for her, but I'm going to make sure to never stand next to him, because I don't want to take that damage as well. Don't try to stack against a Malphite, and always try to stay back. See, there he comes in. We're going to cleanse it immediately and barrier. I don't want to take any damage from that as we kill him. So I think you have to get Mercurial... Um, if you want to get it earlier, you can. I, in fact, it would have been pretty smart this game, but I didn't get it right away, but it's, it's okay. It did keep me alive, and in that case, we're going to win this team fight because of it, and I'll, I'll finish it up with a triple kill, although I believe that technically was a quadra. Did I kill him? I don't even know. But I killed at least four of them in that fight because I killed the Zed, too. Who killed the Malphite? It might have been me. If I did, unofficial Penta, calling it now. Um, I don't think it was me, though. Anyways, Mercurial. I, I'm, I'm just going to keep talking about it because... It's unbelievable how many people are playing ADC and how important ADCs are now since they actually deal damage this season and they're not buying Mercurial. If you're like, well, I'm bad at using actives, get better at it. It's such a good item. It's unbelievable. I'm almost buying it just automatically almost any ADC if their team has any form of lockdown crowd control. It's just, I can't, once again, I can't stop talking about it. It's freaking amazing. You need to get it because it will save your life. Also, if your support gets something um, to save your life too, like the uh, uh, Mikhail's, awesome, have two. They can use it on somebody else, or if you do get locked down back to back, they can they can bail you out that time. So it's very important to pick that up. Final item then, you're gonna obviously need some kind of penetration. Lord Dominic's regards is about the best it gets. You will need it too, so that is what you wanna pretty much round things out with. That's going to be the build, though. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments, and I'll see all of you guys in the next build video.